everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of Nick and Narf. I am Narf. This is Nick. Together we are Narf and Nick. Actually, we're Nick and Narf, but I do everything backwards, so it's Narf and Nick today. <laughs> anyway, glad you're joining us. We got a great, great show for you today with one of the true, truly angelic, amazing voices of rock, pop, country, folk music for over f- almost 50 years. I just had the blessing, the gift of seeing her just a year ago with my good buddy Brian here in Tucson, still going strong, still singing like an angel and playing a mean side What's her guitar. Name? Her name is Bonnie Raitt. Oh, okay. Bonnie Raitt, the great Bonnie Raitt. Born in Burbank, California in 19... I never knew she was born. Her dad was an actor, because I asked Frank, I said, you know... John Ray, her father was John Ray. But she was raised in New York City? Not in New York City. uh, She was grew up there, but she also was in New York and stuff, and she went to... uh, some some uh, musical camps there in New York. She went to school in New York and then went to college uh, out in the East. And I asked Frank, I said, Frank, this is going to sound weird, but why does a, a young girl under the age of 10 pick up a guitar and just start playing? And she's so good at it. Not that, you know, girls don't play guitar. I mean, she's oh, yeah. obviously fantastic. If you ever watch her play, man, she never looks at the string. She's just great. And the answer was what? She got a guitar at the age of eight as a gift. Uh, and she said she, in a quote, I saw I was reading on Wikipedia, as a quote, she said that she always felt self-conscious about her weight and her freckles, freckles. on her face. And so she would sort of isolate herself in a room playing her guitar. guitar. They started her on playing the piano, but apparently her love was guitar. And she learned to expand her, uh, her playing ability when she was at that music camp in New York and just got better and better. And she's been, she is listed as number 89 on Rolling Stone's list of the 100 greatest guitarists Guitarist. of all time. Yeah. She's listed as the number 50. Singer of all time. She's won 13 Grammys. Dig this discography. 18 studio albums, three live albums, three compilation albums, 17 other musical appearances on other albums, 42 singles, Grammys. and 18 musical videos. She earned 13 Grammys 13 for Grammys. 30 nominations. She's just an amazing star, still performing, still amazing. And uh, I mean, and she's cute. Oh yeah, she's just oh, she's great. She's just a tremendous persona, and what a what a she sings songs so beautifully and sensitively, and yet she can get raw and sassy like the best of them. And we've got three great cuts from two of her albums that really were at her earliest peak when she exploded back on the scene after working for so many years. Uh, participating with other artists like John Prine, oh, Little Feet, geez. Warren Zevon, Everybody. Jackson Brown, uh, Leon Russell. And then she finally got her solo chance to really bust free. And boy, everything went just from skyrocketing from there. But we've got t- three songs, one from her huge breakout solo album, Nick of Time, which came out in 1989. And the song is uh, Have a Heart. And then we got two beautiful cuts from her 1991 album, uh, Luck of the Draw. We've got... Wait, the title- did you say 89? 89. So she was like 40. Uh, she was, yeah. She was in her... She didn't... Blo- she really didn't hit her stride till a little bit later in her career. She was always a force in music, but never as a solo artist. And wow. then she really just blossomed onto the scene and deserves everything she gets because she's just an amazing star. And then the two songs off of uh, Luck of the Draw we're going to play are the title song, Luck of the Draw, and one of the most beautiful songs she's ever done, probably one of the biggest, probably the biggest hit from the album, I Can't Make You Love Me. Some great amazing song. stuff. Oh. So before we get into our tribute to the great Bonnie Raitt, uh, I'd like to invite you again, if you have not, if you love what you're going to hear, which I think you will, please subscribe, like, and share. Hit that like icon for us if you do like the video. Even if you don't subscribe, we'd need the help promoting, and we'd appreciate it. But if you subscribe, notification bell. Notice bell, notification bell. You receive all of our content. We've got our choice cuts. We've got our music reaction videos. We'd love to have you be a part of it. And for all the rest of you, as always, we love you for all your support. Anyway, so how are we doing? I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're ready to enjoy some great Bonnie Raitt. So here we go. Let's start it off from Nick of Time from 1989, Bonnie Raitt with Have a Heart. Notice it wasn't Narf of Time. (laughs) It wasn't. Pardon me, I thought I knew you. Would you stand that baby? Cause I 
the sex. What do you think, Nikki? Oh, I guess uh, I'm I'm overwhelmed by the simplicity of the instruments, but yet together they make such a beautiful, complex sound. And then you add to that her voice that she throws in some really cool high notes. She throws in a lot of emotion. Uh, I love the almost Cajun beat with blues uh, attached to it. It was really cool. Yeah. It's a lovely, elegant song with somebody. She did it really nice at the concert, too. I mean, did an extended version, extended guitar play. But the song has so much feeling to it. And the plaintive quality of her her request, have a heart, you know, and yet trying to, you know, trying to elicit love that have a heart, please. You know, it's kind of a little emotional punctuation point, but it's such a gorgeous song. You know, it gets me one of many songs on this album that, that had, that were hit songs. I mean, she had about four or five hits off of this album. You know, that that's the, the weirdity and subtlety of the English language. You say a term like have a heart. If If you just said three words, have a heart, what the hell does that mean? We all know what it means. Have a heart. Like, have mercy. You know what I mean? Have a heart. Show some compassion. You know, but 
have a heart. Okay, everybody has a heart. I mean, you know, but it's the the three words that when you express them, everybody knows what you're talking about. And it and it has multiple layers. I mean, he's also saying like, have a heart. Like here, I'm offering my heart. Have oh, a heart. Yeah. So it has this lovely resonance on both directions. That's I think beautiful. Just, yeah. just really beautiful song. Anyway, what did you guys think of Have a Heart? Leave us your comments. You know, we'll get back to you if you do. So, Lau, let's move forward a couple of years to her next huge album. Um, it's well, the one in between was also a big one, but this one really busted it all open it again with some some incredible songs. Uh, this is Luck of the Draw from 1991, and uh, first I want to do the title song from Luck of the Draw, and then we'll end it with the other big hit that is just maybe one of her most famous gorgeous ballads. Uh, I can't make you love, but here it is. This is a really sexy. You know, I don't know how to describe it. It's like smooth and 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 sultry song uh, called "Luck of the Draw." Here we go, Bonnie Raitt. Did she do this at the concert? No, she didn't do this. Touch the bottles on the bar counter. Your writing screen plays on the side. Three nights a week and keep a girl working. Sometimes it's good to lose your pride. These things we do to keep the flame burning and ride our fire in the sky. Another.
What do you think? This song is, I mean, man, it has so many beautiful guitar, little little riffs and touches in this song. Don't you think so, Nicky? It was. I, it was a, I thought it was a well-produced song. It was really well done. It wasn't overpowering, which it didn't need to be, and I'm glad it wasn't. It was subtle, but yet um, it, she told the story so well. I thought it was it was beautiful, and then the harmonies in the background. Wasn't that I thought, an interesting harmony? They had like the this notes, like they had like weird. minors or diminished yes. notes that they harmonized together in this kind of eerie but beautiful. And you know what it made me think of? It started to make me think of of groups like Steely Dan that would get certain harmonies in their recording studio that you can. It's really hard to uh, to do over again yes. when you're doing it live. Yep, I mean. Those are some really intricate notes, and I thought the the choice were really unique. Oh, it made the song; it just elevated the whole song when it got to those harmony parts, that that chorus line there. And then I was, it was nice that she was singing by herself at first, and then in the, the later part of the song, you had this man's voice in the background. Yes. Did you hear that? That at a lower level, just yes. kind of harmonizing with her in a low, like a like a low undercurrent of a bass line. And I've never heard this song before. I kept waiting for like a, a really cool harmonica or something to come in. I thought that maybe she would throw something like that in there, but she just kept putting in the subtle little nice little guitar riffs oh so many that of them. sounded so sweet you know and there were two or three on top of each other playing counterpoint and everything that's what adds to this song for me and but especially that harmony where it goes you do not expect that harmony yeah. to go where it goes it's definitely that's what different. is beautiful about it but what did you guys think of her title song luck of the draw from the album isn't it terrific it's just everything bonnie does is so tasteful so well crafted so beautiful and then thoughtful. her voice thoughtful and then her voice Add such nuance and to the narrative, the emotional narrative of the song. She's just so terrific. Leave us your comments, okay? Uh, anyway, let's get down now to the third and final submission for your consideration on our tribute to the great Bonnie Raitt. This is maybe her most, one of her most, I mean, I think it may be her top five beautiful love ballads of all. Just painful to hear and nothing, nobody does it better than Bonnie. This is I Can't Make You Love Me yeah. from Luck of the Draw. Tell the production is so good. Turn down the light. Okay. Turn down the bed. Turn down these voices inside my head. Hold me close Don't patronize Don't patronize me Cause I can't make you love me If you don't You can't make your heart feel Something
organ in the background. That's a lot. Sweet. I know this is going to sound weird and don't you guys laugh at me, but I'm getting a Gloria Esteban kind of song. I mean, Gloria Esteban sings these songs really good, too. I wouldn't be surprised if she would have written this for her that she'd sold even more records because of the <laughs> Hispanic community there in Florida. But great song. Ah, what a great song. Oh, man. She, the, 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 the pained confessional quality of the song. Uh, you know, speaking a truth, like, you know, opening, bearing it all for one last desperate, desperate, you know, asking of, to get love in return and knowing that the person you're with doesn't, will never love you, can't love you, doesn't know how, won't express it if they do, because they need to hold back and you're desperately needing that connection. And she just brings her need and desire and her willingness to make everything she is available just for this one last time. It's just the power of that just comes through with the song. But Nick's right, that organ in the background. In the background. Oh. It was just subtle, but it just filled in so much, didn't it? Oh. And then occasionally that bass line would come out in front, and then you just hear a little bit of a snare drum, just a little bit. Oh. And a, a slight, and then the regular piano, of course, was the, you know, the leader of this particular Brilliantly song. conceived, brilliantly structured, gorgeously produced. She writes and great songs. Her emotion, her, the, what she brings to every song is this incredible sense of what it needs to communicate the emotion of the moment, the emotion of the song. And she teaches and you, you don't, you don't have to be complicated. You could just make a song sound complicated. By just using the right layering, and she does that so well. It was well. really, a, really a, a, a blessing for me to get a chance to see her uh, a, a couple of years ago. And like I said, it might as well have been a decade ago because she didn't disappoint with her energy, with her capacity to play. And the guitar work that she still does is just kick ass. And uh, But she can play the fast stuff, the slow stuff. She's just a master of everything. And I, God, what can we say? We hope you enjoyed these three amazing songs from this tremendously iconic, gifted, and uh, enduring artist who has touched so many lives and earned so much admiration, respect, and I wonder praise. how many records she sold. I mean, I'd love to I know. don't have a grand total. We didn't, didn't see you that gotta, on You Wikipedia. gotta figure she's one of these 30 to 50 million, you know? Oh, gotta be, at least, you know, because she had such an impact, but... Anyway, leave us your comments about what you thought about our three songs. And please, if you haven't and you really enjoyed what you heard, we play a lot of different kind of stuff. I know sometimes it isn't all sweet ballads. Sometimes it's hard rock. Sometimes it's this. But we play a range of music that we hope that will delight your ears because we care for them. And we hope you'll enjoy by subscribing. Hit that like icon for us. Share with your friends. Tell them about Nick and Narf. And again, all of you who do subscribe, you know, we love you so much. And, and thank until you. next time, we all want to say Nick and Narf signing off. Signing off from beautiful downtown, actually not downtown, suburban Tucson, Tucson. Arizona. Ciao, Bambini. Ciao, guys. Bye-bye.